I'm Andrew Moran, Liberty Nation's economics editor. Very, very rocky. Death by government. Drain the swamp. Hello and welcome to another installment of Liberty Nation's Swampanomics videocast. I'm Andrew Moran, Liberty Nation's economics editor. This week, Putin's price hike. It has been one year since President Vladimir Putin and Russia invaded Ukraine, disrupting global financial markets, international commerce, and the world order. When the military conflict began, the White House found a convenient scapegoat in Moscow to deflect the reckless inflation-inducing pandemic-era fiscal and monetary policies emanating from Washington. Rather than allude to President Joe Biden's American Rescue Plan or the Federal Reserve's unlimited quantitative easing, officials on the left claimed it was all because of Putin. Now that 12 months have passed, does this assertion ring true? Hardly. The commodities market has been decimated. Crude oil erased all of its post-invasion gains. Natural gas has tanked 43% year to date. Copper slumped 12% over the last 12 months. And wheat has tumbled about 9% so far this year. And yet, as the latest data suggests, inflation has yet to be vanquished. In fact, the disinflation narrative may be crumbling. In case you missed it, the annual consumer price index slowed to just 6.4% and rose 0.5% month over month in January. The personal consumption expenditures price index climbed to 5.4% year over year and jumped 0.6% month over month. The various purchasing managers index readings have revealed a real acceleration in price inputs. Consumers' inflation expectations remain elevated and in some cases have gone up. Considering that eggs have soared 70%, rent has advanced 8%, and baby food has risen 10%, how could this be the fault of an authoritarian leader 5,000 miles away from Washington? Indeed, since the public opinion polling figures show have mostly shown that the American people have not fallen for this mendacity, it is rare to hear the administration utter this nonsense. This is why they have sought for other scapegoats, such as mom-and-pop gasoline stations and big meat. Gasoline prices, for example, are up 5% year-to-date because U.S. output has stagnated over the industry's concerns about Biden's war on the energy sector. If the federal government heeded the recommendations from the American Petroleum Institute, or API, perhaps oil price could finally fall below $70 a barrel. Instead, Washington is draining America's emergency stockpiles to bail out the ineptitude occurring at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Suffice it to say, the goods and services people need the most, from fuel to shelter to healthcare to food, continue to rise at a faster pace, or at the very least, reaccelerate. This might be lost in the headline CPI or PC or PPI figures, but it is the reality today. In the meantime, public policymakers fail to acknowledge the root causes of rampant price inflation, mainly the trillions of new units of currency traveling through the U.S. economy that were created by the Federal Reserve and spent by Congress. This, of course, was coupled with nationwide and global lockdowns that destroyed the marketplace, leading to the supply chain crisis. Ultimately, Putin's invasion upended global petroleum markets, but it became apparent that investors priced in everything when a barrel of oil topped $130 last spring. That's it. Price pressures can be attributed to fiscal and monetary policy in the nation's capital. Defenders of the administration say that inflation is a global problem. This is technically true, but this is still not a good excuse because governments everywhere adopted and employed the same policies and measures that produced multi-decade high inflation in the first place. Government incompetence ignited the inflation flame to yesterday. Government incompetence will keep the inflation flame burning tomorrow. That's it for me this week. Please read my full Swampanomics column on the pages of LibertyNation.com where I discuss inflation, the housing market, and diversity at the U.S. Central Bank. Thank you. Entertaining, informative, and just plain fun. Watch Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five. Produced by conservatives for conservatives. c 5 is the left free zone. Hosted by Liberty Nation's Hi, Lisa K. Donner. Donner. Joined by a raucous, irreverent panel Mag of authors. Deconstructing the leftist narratives. Down. Debating the hot, hot topics. Topic. And remembering to laugh. You heard it here first. <laughs> Join the official conservative safe space. You only did that to piss Jeff off. Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five. I'm Andrew Moran, Liberty Nation's economics editor. Very, very rocky. Death by government. Drain the swamp.